Good morning. So it is still Menopause Awareness Week and this is the last day I'm going to do a live on the Facebook group before the weekend. And if you look back through the week um, at the lives, you'll see that we've talked about a whole range of things really to do with menopause fitness. Um, <clears throat> we've looked at the wisdom of menopause. Uh, we've looked at tests for menopause. Last week I looked at mental health in relation to menopause. All of these are really valid and this week I've I've um, talked to a few organisations which has been really exciting. I you know I talked about natural menopause to Amazon HQ. Hi Sonia, Sonia's going to come on and talk about herbs with us today. So today we're looking at wellness um, from a natural health perspective and herbs that we can use. So I'm just going to click bring on video which hopefully should respond <laughs> let's have a look and see um here we go i'm gonna add you now just that little button at the bottom isn't um working but this one is <laughs> good to see you sonia i'm gonna you're just gonna come on screen in a minute so Sonia and I have known each other for a long, long time. We're both homeopaths. Good morning. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm On good. this just been... grey, drizzly, horrid day, is it like this where you are as well? It is, but it's an improvement on two days ago. That was a oh, really? monsoon, wasn't yeah. it? We yeah. had lots of rain I then. Got, yeah. I mean, it's such a weird time of year. It was muggy yesterday in my yoga class. And I swear if I go out the back, I've still got some strawberries growing in tops so. yes <laughs> i know it's a really odd mixture isn't it it's too warm but it's also it's very wet super rainy yeah but we need it i guess i always feel like that with rain it's like grumpy as it might make me feel we need it and i always think this time of year i get i don't and this is very homeopathic of me um or, or as homeopaths talk about generals don't we um mm -hmm. what we call you know general symptoms are how we relate to the environment I really dislike cold, damp weather. It's like my nemesis. <laughs> oh dear. But we have to have a bit of that to enjoy when we're at our best, don't we? We do. We do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so we, we both come from a homeopathic background. We both trained at the same college and we've been in practice for around the same amount of time, haven't we? We yeah. have, yeah. yeah. Two thousand and one. I I started and was yeah. launched into the world. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And at what point did you, did, because I met herbs way before I met homeopathy. Mm. At what point did you meet herbs? Because that's, that's what we're going to talk about today is some herbs for balancing menopause and sleep. I thought we'd focus on two of your products, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What got um, you into it in the first place? What was, what, you know, when did the plants start speaking? <laughs> Yeah, so we did at college a little bit about everything. So I had a tiny bit of knowledge about herbs, but it didn't particularly, um, you know, appeal to me. I was sort of interested in lots of things alongside the herbs, um, alongside the homeopathy. But after a year or so in practice, I was finding a lot of the time that I was giving really good remedies and they maybe weren't holding so well. And I was suspecting that people's diet might be behind it because, you know, we're using our fabulous energetic um, triggers and if the body hasn't got the resources to follow that healing response through then you get an improvement that then wanes really quickly don't you so totally. I was mindful that diet might be a problem and people find it very hard to fight to really change their diet unless they're really poorly I find um, and of so course true. supplements are so easy <laughs> so you know for a little while I was thinking that supplements might be the answer just for a few months um, but they're very they can be very scientific you know that if you go down that sort of um nutritional science side um it's really coming away from our our beautiful understanding of of, of natural health and wellness so i happened to meet a traditional herbalist and it was it was just the best thing he yeah. um was introduced to me by another homeopath and he was you know out foraging had to wait for him to get back from his foraging to talk to him <laughs> and he had these amazing old books hundreds and hundreds of years old that have been passed down through his family and these wonderful recipes and you know he just explained to me that plants are an amazing source of bioavailable nutrition 
that helps the body to work through that healing response. You know, he was a big fan of homeopathy and I became a big fan of herbs. So for example, you know, he would say, if you um, perceive that you need to give somebody vitamin C, give them rose hips because yeah. rose hips don't just have vitamin C in, they have all these other vitamins and minerals in, amazing little package, nature made package of goodness that helps your body to use the vitamin C. Yeah. So they have these plant enzymes in that literally are the bridge between the, the herb or the plant medicine and the body that where the uptake happens. Yeah. Now, you know, none of that happens with supplements. Supplements are made in a lab. They're not made by nature. So there's where the beautiful journey began of, um, of introducing these alongside my homeopathic prescriptions. And the other thing that I found, because I was really specialising in a lot of patients with chronic fatigue and ME, and I also had, I was treating a lot of children on the spectrum. Now, they are all highly sensitive people yeah. who, you know, could not take a supplement. They were breaking open capsules and having an eighth of it, etc. But all of them could take these things <clears throat> that were um, that were from nature that yeah. was the way that the body interacts with that ingredient is completely different and just completely wonderful yeah so honestly this it's music to my ears <laughs> I love that it's just in a nutshell is so fundamental that we we absorb the nutrients that we take and I see so many people and I'm sure you do too mm. whose gut becomes eroded from mainstream supplements yes. all the fillers the binders all the mm. things that the supplement companies do to deliver you a cheap product that means they fill the capsules fast and they use all sorts of things and you, you know you start learn to read the label and that's what i love when i read the labels of your products i'm just going to hold up this one which is specific to menopause <laughs> hello hello menopause mm -hmm. um because the the label you know has really not got a list as long as my arm you know when you're reading the label of a product you want it to be as long as this section of your thumb is at the absolute maximum so that your body is introduced to a few nutrients at a time and gets yes. used to them. And um, and I just wanted to you today um, to ask you, because um, you've got some key products and I, I think the things that really attract me are that simplicity. Mm -hmm. Obviously we're gonna talk about how they work, um, which, which is the kind of the nitty gritty, but I love that you use biodegradable pots mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that once I've started using this pot and I've eaten my way through this pot and I'm feeling better um, and I, I might need some more of these, I can buy um, a, a recyclable um, pouch. Yes. You know, so, so, so not only does the product become more um, uh, environmentally friendly through that, um, but I buy twice as many in the refillable pouch, I noticed. And, um, and obviously that drops the cost because yes. the cost sometimes is in the packaging. But what a great packaging that's totally biodegradable. Um, and, you know, that is that's just music to my ears, you know, and then we look at the what's in it and um, and, and that's even better. So so do you want to talk a bit about the menopause blend and and what I thought we could do, because I've got this pot to give away is um, I know there are three key ingredients I've been reading up on the website and um, <laughs> there are three key ingredients in this that I thought right let's make that our competition <laughs> <laughs> oh good idea so do you want to talk a bit about what's in it and why you oh. and one of them red clover is like i get asked about a lot so it would be great mm. to hear a little bit more about that yeah of course so all of our formulas, as you say, they've only got the herb ingredients in that only plants, nothing added at all. But they're all the result of my tweaks over years and years. You know, let's try another 5% red clover and, and slightly less of this to make it that they were benefiting like the widest range of people. And all the formulas have got at least a few adaptogenic herbs yeah. in. So like the it. term adaptogen, that's been really taken over in recent years as if it's only something for your nervous system or only something for the brain. But an adaptogen is just a herb that your body can interact with um, in a really biologically intelligent way and use it if it needs it and throw it away if it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And that's all down to that enzyme yeah. content again. Yeah. So 
I get asked a lot about red, the red clover in there as well. And some people have the perception that you can't take red clover if you're taking um, HRT or if you've got um, you know, a, a high risk of breast cancer in your family background, maybe. But those things aren't true. Um, so red clover has got the, the, the four types of um, plant estrogen in them, um, but it is also an adaptogen. So what that means is as it moves through your system, um, it will be taken up if it's needed to and ignored if it's not needed to. And you know how it is, especially with the early stages of menopause. It's not that your hormones are just falling off a cliff. They are going up and down like a yes, roller coaster. Totally. So you need yeah. a product that will absolutely go with that. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and that's where these like intelligence of the plants really, really comes in. It's just amazing. And red clover particularly, I mean, it's absolutely full of nutrition. Um, it's even a good source of um, essential fatty acids, a particular type of essential fatty acid. But again, your gut biome will only absorb it if you need it. Um, but I saw they did a study recently of um, dairy cows that were being fed red clover as part of their grazing. Yes. And their essential yeah. fat levels went up like to like optimal. Yeah, it was absolutely. really, really fantastic. I mean, it's, one, it's a key one for me with breastfeeding mums. Mm. You know, so it makes total sense that at times of hormonal change and we really need to ramp up the fats i think um the essential fatty acids you know in through each stage of menopause for slightly different reasons i feel but one of the things that i often say is that women are not very good about adding in things we're much better about saying oh i must cut out that in order to achieve something and actually yes. perimenopause menopause postmenopause is all about adding in targeted nutrients and it, exactly as you say our body's saying I need to take this up. I need to be selective, you know, and yes. I can be selective yes. because of the nature of these herbs. Absolutely. Yes. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Isn't it? It's just perfect. Yeah. Um, and then and that's what the other so two ingredients things. I noticed were the sort of key ones that, that jumped out at me. And, and I guess in the, in the highest proportions were wild rose petals and a Vena sativa. Yes. Which, yeah. Do you want to talk a bit about those? The, as the well? rose petals are just amazing. And I didn't know until quite recently that they were so well used by herbalists. Mm. But if you think about sort of the um the old image of a of an older lady sniffing her rose water, mm. it makes complete sense. So rose petals um are a brilliant tonic for the uterus. Mm. So as things are changing yeah. and like that, that cell change, they're just keeping everything healthy and nice and as it should be. Um, and they are also interacting with hormones. So you've got um, things like increased libido comes from using the, the rose petals to keep, mm -hmm. keep things where they should be. They're just fantastic. And then what was the other one you said? A Venus sativa. A Venus sativa, yeah, oh, which I, I noticed is in one of the others. But a Venus yes. sativa, oh, it's so it calming is such and a, soothing. Such a favourite, such a favourite. It is. It's really calming for the nervous system. So thus allowing the hormones to do their thing mm -hmm. so when you can calm down the nervous system so you're not running on adrenaline and you don't have cortisol blocking all your hormone receptors yes. then the hormones that you do have can be taken up and do their job in in a really perfect way yeah, um, that's, that's where that comes in but I it's another it. adaptogen again so um mm -hmm. we can use it in in a way that gives energy yes. or that helps people sleep yeah. because it is adapting to what the person needs at the time I and just it. bringing that system yeah. back into balance like i say it's so biologically intelligent and just such a perfect um support for the homeopathy yeah you know when i'm talking about herbs or when i'm talking about the hello wellness supplements i don't talk about homeopathy so much mm -hmm. but in my mind as a practitioner these things are a support for that yeah. you know and i I totally everything I've talked about this week is like we need this holistic mm. approach you know that yes. menopause affects every system in the body or it can do and it affects you know as, as homeopaths we look at you know spiritual mental emotional general and physical symptoms we don't just focus on hot flushes we're like why are the hot flushes coming um what is it you know if we if we think about a hot flush mm. Um, we think about sweat when else in our life do we break sweat you know mm -hmm. what is it perhaps that we are fearful about moving forward mm -hmm. or what is it that we need to release you know because the other yes. time we we break sweat in fear or we break sweat in a fever and a fever at that point is about releasing something so is there something that we need to let go of in order to move forward you know that mm -hmm. to me is the conversation around 
hot flushes and if the heat in the body could feel like anger you know so it's mm -hmm. like is there something else that we need to let go of so to me it's it's a holistic conversation that we need to have when it comes to menopause and um i love the way that red clover meets that i just mm -hmm. think you know the more i read about it the more i am because my I, I well herbs is what piqued my interest initially i was going right. to be a herbalist and then when my kids were young and i experienced homeopathy and someone said if you thought about homeopathy mm -hmm. He was the brother of Stella Berg, right. and um, and I went and did a foundation course with Stella Berg before going to um, CPH. So so this combination, Hello Menopause, is um, red clover, wild rose petals, and Avena sativa, and a few other um, fabulous ingredients. The other one that I wanted to talk about, because just before we we finish, because I'm trying to keep these 15 minutes, <laughs> I'm going off to um, a family christening today, so I've got to belt right. through some work, get on the train. <laughs> blah blah um but um i need one of the <laughs> i need one of these um the other one was the hello sleep and that mm -hmm. also has the abena sativa in it but it has uh, valerian which is one of my favorite mm -hmm. herbs for the nervous system such a beautiful herb and chamomile and you know, is, many people yeah. will drink chamomile tea but i i hear that you've tweaked those ingredients to get the kind of balance right for sleep yes how about yes. that in relation to menopause you know um anything that you would say about that that particular blend well it's difficult because it is so individualized isn't it yeah. so yeah. um one of the main ingredients in the sleep formula is actually skull cap so um I love skull cap. yes yeah. yes mm -hmm. so in, in old english we call it hoodwort yeah. um but it's one of those herbs that's grown around the world and just has different names in different places so more yeah. people know it as, as skull cap i yeah. guess and skull cap is relaxing for the nervous system but in a physical way so for yeah. people that can't get to sleep at night because they're physically uncomfortable um i used to get the most terrible pains on the outside of my thighs mm -hmm. when i was trying mm -hmm. to sleep other people have like a restless legs or just outright joint pain yeah. don't they yeah. so that element of the formula is to relax that so that you can sleep and then Beautiful. you have i know i'm already <laughs> thinking of three or four clients here <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got got the um the avena sativa that's settling the nervous system side so that you can sleep so if there's like repeated thoughts or you can't stop worrying about something that wouldn't seem very big in the day but seems really big at night then that's really helping there yeah. mm -hmm. whereas the chamomile is more of a just a sedative you know yeah. just calming you down so that you can sleep and valerian is in that same area but there are even things in the formula to help with blood sugars or to help with serotonin production so whatever the block has been to falling asleep and staying asleep um, there's something in there to to fix that problem and get you yeah beautiful. off to sleep faster and feeling more refreshed when you get through to the morning beautiful well, thank you so much thanks for taking the time to come on i, I really appreciate oh, it and i feel like lovely. Is, i feel i already know i'm going to upload this to youtube as well um, and I'll share obviously the link with you, but um, it's a really great talk and a really great focus. So if you're listening, I will put this up as a separate post. Um, I have a free pot of Hello Menopause to give away, um, but there is a little quiz around that. So if you're watching this on replay, can you press hashtag or write hashtag replay in the comments? So we keep this little video live and and available for others in the group because facebook algorithms are a bit rubbish and mm. <laughs> they um they don't always kind of tell everybody that you're on air you know so yeah <laughs> i mean there's all sorts of tricks and stuff that we can do around that but um i will yeah i'll share a separate post on that and um if any of you've got any questions either for me or um sonia you know oh would that work for me or you go and look at the site i'll, I'll put the link up to your site um as well um and you've got questions about any of the other blends um just give us a shout we'll help because there's stuff you've got stuff for digestion haven't you mm, i yeah. noticed um there's energy as well when I mean, you talked about that in terms of your own work yeah so um fantastic brilliant Great. that's been yeah. lovely thank oh, you it's so nice to chat to you that was like uh, you know i love it every every single session that i've done even though they're only short you know i've learned something Mm. new i was talking to lisa knighton on wednesday and just a really simple exercise to do if you're someone who like me can spend a lot of time sitting at the desk yes. you know and yes. and so i've learned today you know it's like oh okay 
I think I might need to take this. <laughs> well, everybody <laughs> knows about it if I forget today. my morning dose. So. Yeah. <laughs> I find it helps you yeah. too. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, look, have a great day. And I know and we'll you. see you soon. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Sonia. Bye. Bye. Bye.